Hello everyone and in this video we will be able to produce this type of layout. This is a responsive design layout in which uh, depending on what the user is using for example for smartphones or uh, devices with small screens the layout is automatically arranged into like a column and if it is a little bit wider uh, it will be arranged into something like this two columns uh, still six boxes and if it's a large screen like laptop desktop and televisions it will be arranged into something like that and depending on the zoom level sometimes it will be arranged into something like this so for example if i am going to press f12 on the keyboard uh, we can try to preview this on an iphone se and it will look something like that and if they are going to rotate the iphone uh, this is going to be the layout as you can see the boxes are filling up the uh, available width that we are going to specify in our program and let's try for example ipad mini so if it is in a portrait orientation uh, the boxes are in column and if they are going to rotate it so it's in two columns and it is arranged into something like that and of course in a browser as well as you can see depending on the zoom level uh, the layout are actually flexible so we will be able to achieve this kind of layout using only html and css so let's go ahead and get started so from our vs code i'm going to create a project so i'm clicking on file open folder heading over to the location on my computer i'll just type here uh, the file name is going to be uh, uh, responsive uh, design i'm going to click this button to select that folder i'm gonna right click here and create our index.html file as well as our styles.css First, we're going to understand how media queries works. So I'm going to generate here my HTML template. And we are just going to have a few elements here. Maybe I'll just type here media queries uh, just for the title of our project and Flexbox. And I think this is enough for now for media queries. I'm going to right click here and preview our project in our browser like so. And in our styles that says is make sure that we can connect that or link that into our HTML document by using the link tag right here. So I'm going to target the body, uh, set the background color to, I'll just pick this aquamarine. And for media queries, we have to write this, the at sign on the keyboard. So you press the shift key and then the number two on the keyboard to produce that symbol. So what we need is just type media here, okay? and then open and close parentheses and here we can set the uh, breakpoint so for example at around 992 pixels maximum width all right i'm going to change the uh, uh, background color of the body all right so by the way notice the syntax so first we get this media and then we have open and close parentheses at around maximum width of 992 I just made that up. You can come up with your own, but right now you can just follow along with me. So at around this unit right here, we can change the body, the background color, right? For example, the background color is going to be red. Uh, let's try to uh, choose a lighter red so that it's it's not very bright uh, to, to our eyes. Okay, now we can copy this and we can say at around uh, 700 pixels, Maybe we want the color to be our, something like a purple color. Uh, let's select that. Okay. And we can copy that again. Paste it here. Let's say very, let's say very, very small uh, width device like uh, phones. And maybe we can change this into something like green. And if we are going to, uh, let me do this first. Okay, so from here, I'm going to squeeze the browser. As you can see, at around here, at around 900 pixels. So the default background was aquamarine, right? That's the default. Let's put it back. At around 900 pixels, it changes to, to that color, uh, red, okay? 
And around 700, it's going to change to purple. Let's go ahead and do that. There you have it. And at around 366, it will be squished to something like a green color, like so. And there's actually a tool that we can utilize. Uh, you can press F12 on the keyboard. And you have here like the most uh, common devices right now uh, on the market or available to consumers. So for example, for iPhone SE, so by default, it's going to be purple, right? If, even if they're going to uh, rotate that because the width right here is around 667. And in our code, we get purple at around maximum width of 700 pixels. All right, I hope you get the point, right? So if we are going to set this to responsive, and as you can see over here, let's try to reduce the zoom level to around 75%. So we can set to, for example, the, the width right here to around 901, 901. Okay, press enter. Now we have the default aquamarine color with the body. But around 900 pixels, press enter we change that to, or it automatically changed to red or orange. And at around 700 pixels, let me go ahead and edit the width, we change to purple, all right? So not only that, for example, at around 700 pixels, you can change the uh, uh, alignment of this text. So over here at around 700 pixels, we can change the alignment of this H1 over here Maybe we wanted to set the text align property to center. And maybe we can change the background of that H1 as well into something like uh, this. All right, so there you have it. So if we're going to drag this here, our H1 is at the left, but at around 700 pixels, it is now at the center and it has a background color of chocolate. So that's how media queries works. And basically, this is how we do it when it comes to uh, web design, I mean, responsive design. So all CSS properties, you can specify it here. You can add padding, you can add uh, margin, etc. You can utilize your knowledge now in Flexbox to arrange some elements in row at a certain size of the screen, right? And that's what we're going to do right now. So now that you already understand how the uh, uh, media queries works, uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a new project over here. I'll type here uh, responsive underscore design two because we already have one. Let's select that folder. Let's create our file, right? And styles.css. So in our uh, HTML file, we will try just to draw or come up with a couple of boxes. So for example, here we have an H1 first, all right? And we have a div. We're going to add a class here. Uh, we, we are going to name it a wrap, like a wrapper, okay? And then we have a container over here. And for example, we have a div with a class of box. And we'll just name this box one, okay? And we're gonna be making at least uh, five more. So we will have six in total. So this is box two, box three, box four, box five, box six, all right? And maybe we're going to put here, hold on, why is the closing tag for the H1? <laughs> hold on, let me go ahead and transfer this H1 closing tag over here. Uh, fix the indentation like so. The H1 is just going to be, well, I'll just type here media queries and black box. Okay, make sure to link our CSS right over here, styles.css. Right click here, open with live server so we can preview our project on the browser like so. Now we have those boxes. Let me just fix this last one, type six over there. Let me close this pop-ups and arrange my window like so. All right, so this is what we need for HTML. Let's go over to the styles.css file and I'll just target first everything and set the box sizing to border box. You already know this if you have been following this series. 
So margin over here, we're going to set that to zero, padding to zero as well. And maybe we add the font family of Arial right over here. And now let's go ahead and target the H1. Uh, let's just go ahead and center that on the page. I'm going to set the zoom level to around 100%. And maybe I'll just add some uh, properties here, okay? Like a margin of zero and the padding of 20 pixels. All right, so let's go ahead and target first the wrap and uh, add some CSS properties. So we're going to set this uh, display to flex. The only reason for this flex right over here is for us to be able to center the container uh, on the cent uh, on the page, okay? Uh, maybe we can set the background color to uh, uh, a green. I'll just go ahead and hover over here and choose a light green kind of color uh, like that, maybe more lighter. Okay, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and center that on the page. Uh, we're now going to style the container and we're going to set, of course, the display to flex. This is our topic and flex wrap right over here. This is the first time that I introduced this, at least in this series. Okay, so uh, what is flex wrap? Okay, so the property is flex wrap and then the value is wrap because the other thing is no wrap. So let's talk about first wrap because no wrap is like the default. So this property over here, remember this is the container, right? Just like when we declare display flex, we set that to container in order to influence the behavior of its children, right? So here, if we're going to say wrap, this is a behavior in which the children, this div right over here, they are going to, if, if there are no more available width, like if the width is already like very, very small, they will be forced to arrange in multiple lines. So right now they're still in one line because we did not set the height and width of these boxes yet. If there are no more available width here, these children of this container class will be forced to be in a multiple arrangement. Okay, that's basically it. All right, so now having said that, let's go ahead and continue styling this container. Uh, we are going to set the width of the container to around 100 view width. I'll set the margin for top and bottom zero and left and right auto, okay? Anyway, it doesn't really matter right now. I'll just, I'll just set some padding over here at around 20 pixels because we are now going to set the style of our boxes. So right over here, the class box, uh, we can now go ahead and set the minimum width, all right? Let's set the minimum width at around 300 pixels. And uh, maybe uh, we are going to set the background color for them. I'll just uh, select blue here, but I will hover over and select a lighter color. Anyway, so that's the background color. Uh, maybe we change the color of the text as well to white and the text align may be center right now. Let's have some padding. Okay, just to have some spacing on the, on the font or the text in there. Uh, let's have border radios. Uh, we will try to separate them using margin. Maybe 20 pixels is good. And the height, let's have a height. They look like a button right now. Let's have a height of around 250 pixels. Uh, let's have some media queries over here. So at media, maximum width. You can use minimum width as well, but I am more comfortable using the maximum width. It is more understandable, uh, at least on my part. But you can experiment with minimum width as well. So I'm going to set the flex property to around one. One, I'm going to explain this a little bit later in more detail. So I'm going to copy that right over here. Uh, this one is, maybe we will set this to 950. And this one over here, 768. And the last one is going to be around 366. All right, so I'll set here 25%. Again, I'm going to explain this a little bit later. 
over here 50 percent and this one 100 percent okay and to make sure that our elements are centered on the page uh, we can head over to the container and uh, add here a justify content center like so all right so let's go ahead and take this one by one uh, i know that you already have some understanding of the flex before when we were when we are setting this to uh, when we were not using media query yet right when we were using it here like a flex and then one and then we have here one and then auto okay so right now it's, it's still valid okay your current knowledge but right now i'm going to explain how this would behave at the moment with the media queries so right now as you can see we, we already have some behavior over here so let me just uh when we hover over here this one is grow right and the second one is shrink and the last one is uh, flex basis uh, the flex basis that means this box over here uh, we already have its default value right 300 pixels minimum width so we're going to take that into consideration already with all these properties but at around 950 pixels it will consume 25 percent by default maybe we can set this to 23 right because we have some padding and margin and things like that so it will take 20 23 percent in relation to the width of its container which is this one the width of the container uh, as you can see it's 100 view width so that's the maximum width of the screen or the browser and uh, right now it will only take 20 23 percent but it can grow or shrink as needed okay same thing here at around 768 pixels it will consume 50 percent this box right here all of these but it can grow or shrink as needed and at around 366 pixels it will consume 100 percent of the width of its parent and it can grow and shrink as needed all right so let's go ahead and observe that right now okay so there it is uh right now it's around uh let's let's use the developer tools press f12 and let's uh set the zoom level at around 75 percent and let we can start from here so if we scroll down like so as you can see and if we go ahead and scroll down further uh the layout became like this all right so now if we go back over here uh we can actually make this more flexible if we are going to set a flex property here for box one like so and as you can see it's taking uh, before if we're going to remove this uh, it's just taking it's just setting into minimum width of 300 pixels but setting that to one that means this box by default will be flexible it can grow and shrink uh, by just typing one here it's just the same of doing this okay it's just the same of doing that and uh, it, we can just remove that to make it shorter and let's press f12 on the keyboard and let's set to a uh, zoom level of around 75 percent so we can maximize this like so and as you can see the padding and the margin and the spacing is actually going to be uniform all throughout even up to this point 306 uh, 300 pixels it's because uh, we set here a flex one for the box itself so this property is being carried out all the way through even with this uh, specification over here but of course it will this one right here will take effect so at around 950 pixels like that okay uh, I'm, I'm zooming out so you can see that it is now in one row but as we zoom in or if the spacing of the width gets narrower as you can see the box x over here was forced to go into the next line and that's because we set the flex wrap to wrap over here okay if we are going to set that to no as you can see it's still on the same line and even if we're going to reduce things like that it will remain like that it will overflow the layout 
So typically, if we're trying to design a responsive layout with Flexbox, we don't use no wrap. We always use flex wrap property with the value wrap. All right, so there you have it, guys. And I hope that this has been informative for you. See you in the next one.